Are Jade Warriors any good? This isn't an easy question to answer, honestly. I mean, okay, I've fought them plenty, but they're actually an armored and shielded Tier 1 unit from a Tier 1 military building. So yeah, you can get them ridiculously early, but are they actually useful in an empire where peasant long spearmen exist? Let's find out. Please like, subscribe, comment, and consider joining through my coffee page. Coffee is good, coffee is life. On Ultra, Jade Warriors come with 120 models and 8,280 hit points, markedly less than the Long Spearmen, and are more expensive than Empire Swordsmen, of course. Armor is 80, with a bronze class infantry shield blocking 35% of small arms fire from a frontal arc. Leadership is 64, speed is a Chaos Warrior level 28, by which I mean slow as molasses, melee attack is 24, which is obscenely poor. Attack interval is 4.2, which is... could be worse. Melee defense is 34, which is actually legitimately solid. Weapon strength is 28, with base damage 21, and 7 armor piercing, which is decent. Charge bonus is an uninspiring 12, and mass is 125, so they're a little harder for a feral mammoth to toss around, but they toss around chosen, so don't feel bad. Like the Long Spearmen, they have a permanent formation attack trait, which lowers their killing power further, but makes it harder to be rid of them. And let me tell you, starting as the Iron Dragon and trying to burn one of these down in a turn one siege was annoying. They obtain Battle Harmony Yang, and without greater intensity, that'll jack up melee attack by 4, defense by 6, and leadership by 6. They also have Defensive Stance, which gradually increases charge resistance, then armor, then more charge resistance, which is good enough, but charge reflection it is not. The basic Jade Warriors unit doesn't get much direct stat help from the tech trick. There's a little melee defense, but you get stuff like reduced exhaustion, lower upkeep, and better recruit rank, and so on. Most of what you're looking at is from in-battle buffs, either from the standard and not at all bad red line, or active boosts from skills or magic. So how do we use Jade Warriors? The problem is very simple. They're not as good at fending off cavalry as long spearmen, and they don't have the killing power to use them as elite infantry. You're never going to overcome this with them. Their weapon strength isn't getting boosted, so they will not hit harder. Most of their improvements come to hitting more often, or to their overall staying power. So it is staying power where we must assess them. As I said, cavalry hates long spearmen, but archers hate jade warriors. If you want to defend your own side against archers and infantry, jade warriors are your better bet for the long haul. They're brutal to try and cut through, and they're a tier 1 unit. That's their superpower. If a front line is about buying time, then they tend to buy a lot of it. What are they weak to? Well, magic gets involved, of course. There's artillery, but I'd comfortably say that any kind of armor-piercing chariot is going to utterly wreck them, including war machines that act like chariots like an Iron Demon or Skullcrack. To them, Jade Warriors are nothing but food. Also, any kind of legitimate elite infantry with real armor piercing will wear them down without much trouble. Finally, their defensive stance may matter when bracing, but once they're in contact with an enemy unit, they're not bracing anymore, are they? Any kind of cavalry rear charge threatens them a lot. So you have to keep this in mind, but despite those limitations, they are very good at pointing to a spot, saying, hold this as long as you can, and not watching them go to work while you put your attention somewhere that requires more of it. Take care and have fun frustrating your edgelord opponents that want to kill everything quickly, like Dark Elves. All of them.